Welcome to the SharePoint Financial Practices webcast. And this time, we're going to talk about how to consume taxonomy data within the SharePoint framework. So if you have a business requirements within your client-side web parts or extensions to access the taxonomy data or potentially even update the SharePoint taxonomy data, and what is the current situation of how to do that, uh, what are the options, and potentially what's going to happen in the future. Uh, my name is Esa Yuvonen. I'm a senior program manager from SharePoint Engineering. With me today, responsible of the demo and obviously part of the discussion is Paolo. So Paolo, will you do the quick intros as well? Yes, thank you, Visa. I'm Paolo Pielorsi from PSC.com. I'm a consultant working in a company of my own, as well as an MCM and an MVP on Office Server and Services. Cool. Excellent. Excellent, Paolo. So, few slides and then do a live demo on how to actually make this happen. Now, I don't know how well you as a person who's watching the video, how well you're up to date on the current situation of the taxonomy, but we have this a small challenge, or at least at the time we are recording this video. So please do follow up on the, on the latest documentation. This situation might have changed, but at the time of the video has been recorded, there is no native REST APIs available. So the only way you can actually access the taxonomy data is by using the classic CSAM APIs. And classic CSAM API is actually designed to be used uh, using the managed code, essentially using Windows and .NET Framework. Um, and there are certain set of uh, available types and actions. So you can access the taxonomy session, you can access term store, group, term sets, and terms. So the coverage in the taxonomy layer in CSAM is actually really good, uh, starting from SharePoint 2013. SharePoint 2010 didn't have, did have a horrible CSAM support. For this one, 2013 could CSAM support. But then now in 2018, we are already moving past the CSAM. We are moving into this world where we want to have non-managed code APIs. So how would we actually make this happen? Well, you can actually make this happen by mimicking the CSAM uh, calls. And let's have a look on that one. So what does it actually precisely mean? So what it actually means is that the CSAM is internally uh, calling a client SVC. So whenever you're using writing managed code, if, you, if you're doing a console application or provide a hosted app or whatever, uh, and you're calling a REST API uh, using the CSAM uh, taxonomy APIs, it is actually doing a remote call against client SVC. So it's, it's a SOAP call against the client SVC service, and then the, the client SVC service is returning data back uh, remotely as well. Because this is a remote API, you can actually mimic calling this API also using SharePoint Framework. So you don't have to use explicitly the client-side object model library to call the client SVC. Now, it means that the, the calling and the structures do actually get pretty messy. And we're going to show that one in practice in a, in a second. And somebody might be saying, wait, 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 is this really supported um, and documented? Well, the answer is technically yes. So in our protocol documentation, we are actually defining how the process query method works, uh, so which actually exposes uh, the, the details on how you can use the CSM, even though you wouldn't be using uh, the CSM client side uh, library for calling the client uh, SVC. And what it means in practice is that from an engineering perspective or from a custom development perspective, you need to kind of reverse engineer on what the CSM is actually doing and then copying that to your REST calls. And yes, this is technically horrible, uh, no doubt. <laughs> but once again, there's no, a, a no native REST API uh, currently available. So the, the question is more like, okay, uh, Somebody needs, we need to have this functionality. Uh, I need to make this functionality work for my SharePoint framework solution. If options are, I can't do my work or I'm gonna use the client SVC as a workaround. You can use the client SVC as a workaround. Whenever we'll get our REST API for taxonomy, uh, native REST API for taxonomy available, which is in the pipeline, uh, but please use the user voice for uh, give more votes as well um, for prioritization. Um, whenever that REST API is available, you can absolutely, uh, and you should be looking into uh, moving to using the native REST API at that point. If, if I can add a sentence here, Lisa, my opinion is that 
uh, think, in my opinion is that if you uh, need to have access to taxonomy in order to move uh, uh, to the modern UI and to SPFX, uh, it's better to use this, let me call it workaround using the client SVC and the process query rather than being stuck on the classic mode just because yes. you, you still don't have support uh, in CISM or sorry, not in CISM, in the REST API for the taxonomy. So Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, how would we put this in a in a? This is not a black and white uh, recommendation or a decision. It's well, if you are blocked and you need to make this thing happen, this is the only way you can actually make it happen. It's not a recommended way of doing uh, the stuff uh, in SharePoint Online by mimicking uh, the season, but it does get you unblocked if you have a business critical uh, uh, requirement which you need to get uh, implemented. Now. Um, on this one, uh, just a, uh, maybe a small sneak peek uh, or a mentioning, uh, just to make sure that that's mentioned as well. Obviously, this would be a great uh, opportunity for a community work, uh, so creating some sort of a wrapper on top of the client SVC and the taxonomy uh, APIs. And please wait, depending on when you're watching the video, um, there might be already some announcement out. Uh, if you're watching the video uh, in uh, early May uh, 2018, uh, please wait a few more weeks and uh, there should be some call announcements available. So we're looking into making some work on this side as well. But more on that announcement uh, slightly later. But I think that's it for a kind of an introduction perspective. So let's let's see this in practice. Or do you have anything to add on that one, uh, Paolo? No, I think it's the right time to move to the demo. So. Excellent. So let's have a look on the on the in real life how this one will, will look. And it looks slightly awkward, but hey, it works. So let's move to the Palos desktop and have a look on the demo. Okay, here we are in uh, SharePoint Online uh, in a demo tenant, uh, which I will use uh, for this demo. And as you can see, we have a bunch of uh, uh, term groups uh, and some term sets, and one term set, which is the one highlighted, which is made by few terms in a hierarchy. And for example, some of these terms uh, uh, have some custom uh, shared and local properties too. Now, I have... Uh, a client-side web part, which is a very simple one, which will simply show in the console log of the F12 of my browser the uh, hierarchy of terms retrieved from the uh, taxonomy, just to show you, just to prove you that you can access the taxonomy. So let me refresh this page to show you the output. And as you will see, here we have an array of three items, which are the three terms uh, under the uh, term set uh, that I showed you. The first one is the legal notes with some local properties, which are the properties I showed you a few seconds ago. And we have two more terms, of course, which are the other two that we have in the hierarchy, together with the children of uh, the tools uh, uh, item, which are still taxonomy terms. So we are able to retrieve the full hierarchy from a term set, uh, and we can use them in our own solutions to show or, for example, a tree view or to do whatever else you need to do with the terms uh, in the term store. Oh, my God, how? Paolo, how is this possible? <laughs> this is the – no! <laughs> It's a kind of magic, <laughs> just <laughs> quoting a, a, a song, a famous song. So <laughs> here we are in the render method of the uh, client side web part, and I have an SP taxonomy service, which is a type I created – using TypeScript in my SharePoint framework solution. And the SP taxonomy service accepts the context of my client side web part, so the SharePoint framework context, as the input parameter for the constructor of this service. So when I provide the context to the constructor, I simply create the uh, URL, I build the URL of the client SVC service slash process query which is, oh, sorry, which is the uh, target endpoint of my service to do the real request uh, targeting uh, uh, SharePoint Online uh, using the absolute URL of the web page in which uh, I am, of the website, sorry, in which I am. Uh, and in order to consume the uh, taxonomy, I simply need to use uh, a method, which is the get terms from uh, term set. I provide the name of the term set and optionally the locale that I want to use to extract uh, 
all of the terms with a specific uh, uh, language uh, value. And I have to make kind of an awkward uh, workaround, as we said uh, before uh, the demo. In fact, I have to provide an XML request, which is kind of weird, but basically simply defines, based on the documentation which we uh, referenced in the slide deck, defines what we want to do. So it defines the uh, object and the method that we want to call in the object model of uh, SharePoint uh, through the client service uh, that we are consuming. And here we just get the uh, term set by name. This is the method that we are using. And we provide the name of the term set uh, as well as the locale if we want to use a specific language while retrieving uh, the term set. We make the request as an HTTP request using the context of SharePoint framework. And of course, we are providing an XML request. And so the content type of the request will be a text XML, while the response will be an application JSON. And the application JSON response will be an object uh, which will be made of a bunch of uh, objects. It will be an array of different objects. And we need to retrieve from that array of objects what we are targeting. So we get a collection of term sets we get a specific term set, which is the one we have in target. And for that term set, we get the child items. In fact, we also have a bunch of interfaces defined in my project. And those interfaces define the output, the JSON output that I will get back from the process query request. And for example, I can see that a term set is a property called terms, which is a collection of terms, which will have a child items, which will be an array of term. And every single term will be made of all of these properties, including the uh, children and all the other stuff. So if I go back here, I simply get the child items, so the children terms of my uh, term set. And using uh, a uh, recursive approach, I can go through all of them, and I can expand them. In fact, the expand term method will use, let me scroll a little bit down, will use another uh, get child terms method, which will make another request to get all of the children of a term in, of the term in which I am, and will fill all of the missing properties like the custom properties, the local custom properties, and all the other stuff. The get child terms method is yet another method which still uses the process query approach with another XML request in which I will make a query for the ID object identity of the term that I want to expand. And when I expand a, a term, I will also ask to SharePoint Online to give me back the custom sort order, the custom properties, and the local custom properties. So this is a technique to expand, to get all of the complex properties of my object. And once I have done that, again, using an SP HTTP client request, a POST request, and getting back a JSON response, I will go through all of the terms in the term collection, which will represent the children terms of my current term. And so I will be able to build the full hierarchy of items in memory. Of course, I can do caching. I can store those information, for example, in the local session storage if we want to improve the performances. This is up to you. But basically, you simply say, give me the term set, and you will get back a full hierarchy of terms ready to go. And, and obviously, like you said, you should be guessing some of this data because it's 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 not like the taxonomy structure is going to be changed in every single second. It might be changed in once every single, let's say, five minutes or ten minutes or whatever is the or once a day. Um, and so you can actually cache that, all of that information, but uh, which will then have a positive impact on the performance. Right now, however, we wanted to concentrate on how to make get this information available, um, which is. How would I put it? Dirty. Uh, it's it's not. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't make us feel good either uh, in SharePoint engineering. Uh, but it's it's uh, it's a workaround right now to achieve uh, accessing the taxonomy data, even though the, the taxonomy doesn't have a REST APIs. 
But I think. And let me add one yeah. more thing. Sorry, Visa. Yep. Uh, okay. The source code you just saw uh, will be available uh, in uh, the upcoming uh, weeks, uh, based on the date of recording, because it is part uh, of a bigger project uh, uh, which will uh, uh, become available uh, uh, before summer this year. I'm talking in uh, 2018. So uh, stay tuned. You will find much more uh, content in this sample solution, but you will also find the SP taxonomy service uh, ready to go and available for your own solutions. Absolutely, absolutely. And there are some other uh, community efforts around this one as well. So we're looking into having uh, centralized services around taxonomy, building this old model, but then whenever the native REST API will be available for taxonomy, we can just flip uh, the implementation on behind of the scenes. And more information on all of that, uh, depending on when you're watching the video, might be already out or might be coming within a week or two or three. But um, let's get back on the slides and close up to web webcast. Excellent. Thank you, Paolo, for the uh, great demo. And like like mentioned, even when before Paolo started the demo, well, it looks awkward. It looks uh, slightly messy, um, and it did. It, it, it is slightly messy that you need to mimic uh, the, the classic CSM uh, API calls with a client as we see. But, if this is the only option for you to get your business requirement completed right now, because the native REST API is missing, it is better to make that happen rather than uh, being stuck on not being able to implement something in SharePoint Online. Totally agree, totally agree. We need to pay our bills and we need to do it in the right way. So if we want to move to the modern uh, UI experience and we need taxonomy, let's do that rather than be stuck on Absolutely. the classic mode. Absolutely. Now, theoretically, there's, there is the alternative option, which would be that you write your own web API, which you're hosting then in Azure, which is then calling the client as, uh, the taxonomy on behalf of your uh, SPFX web part. So kind of a, put a man in the middle uh, over there, which is absolutely valid option as well. So, But that increases the complexity of the overall solution. There's, there's some advantages advantages and disadvantages on that option as well. Uh, using this kind of a, uh, I think it's it's fair to say this kind of a hack uh, in SharePoint framework, uh, even though this is documented API uh, is more straightforward. But and from a cost perspective, having uh, a major infrastructure to do that, uh, uh, it can be uh, a problem if you are just developing a small solution. Of course, if yes. you're building a, a much big solution, of course, uh, it will make sense to have an Azure infrastructure and have all the app services and all the stuff uh, backing your solution on Azure. But if it is a small one, maybe this one is a better option uh, or at least a cheaper option. Now, Paolo, I want to have a black and white recommendation. Uh, no, there isn't. <laughs> That's a classic thing. Always people want to have. So what is the recommended thing for Microsoft? Well, it depends. Because reality is that there's multiple ways of achieving uh, this and this end result. So there's no black and white recommendation on this one. But anyway, I, I think that's pretty clear now uh, how it can be happening uh, done. And uh, we'll reference the code. Uh, well, the code sample itself, and depending when you're watching the video, it might not be available immediately when the video go li goes live. It will be available as part of a bigger uh, a sample uh, slightly later. But thank you for watching, and please keep the feedback coming uh, around this one. And thank you, Paolo, for the great demo. Thank you. Thank you.